Surface Science Research Centre. Yeah. What is Surface Science all about? Okay, it's actually there in the name. It's the science of surfaces. So you might think, well, why is that important? But if I look at you, Marcus, what do I see? I see the surface of Marcus, which is your skin. Hmm? This is a thing that interacts with the outside world and, and is very important to you. Now what you find is the skin of things, the surfaces of things, uh, are, are incredibly important in a whole range of processes. Okay? So I have a slide here to show you some of the things uh, where surfaces are very important. So Marcus here uh, is, is, is a slide about catalysts. So you come from York, uh, but up near uh, Middlesbrough and so on, you used to have huge uh, industrial plants making, making uh, ammonia, for example. Now you make that, it's very difficult to take nitrogen and hydrogen together and make ammonia. It's a hard process. And the thing that drives it is a thing called a catalyst, which is essentially a surface of, of a metal, which is so reactive that they bring the two molecules together and create their reaction. Catalysts, which generally work uh, on, on reactions that take place at surfaces, underpin over 80% of industrial processes. And that's where the surface is working very hard to make uh, uh, new molecules, new kinds of, uh, kinds of chemicals. If you look at semiconductors, yeah, trying to get mobile phones to work faster and quicker requires using surfaces of semiconductors and see how they work, right? Biomaterials, I don't know if you know anything about biomaterials, but do you know about hip, tra hip transplants? Yeah? So if you hurt your hip, they put an artificial hip in there. But there's a problem, because if you put something that's not your, not your bone, maybe a metal, you need to coat it. You need to coat the surface, otherwise the body attacks it. So that's where surfaces come here. Have you heard about, over there, and I'll just show, show you one more example, smart glass. Have you heard about self-cleaning glass? Yeah, yeah, you, you can have glass, you've got a very special coating on the surface, which actually helps to clean the glass as, as it rains on there. This is something that's been created, for example, just across the water here at Pilkington's. Uh, and, and this is a surface process. So almost a whole range of technologies, the surface is really, really important because the surface is a thing that comes in contact with the outside world. And this is where a lot of processes take place. So, so that's one of the reasons why surface science is so important. The second reason why it's so important is, is actually a challenge that was set to all of science in 1959 by a very famous scientist. Have, I don't know if you've heard of him. Have you heard of uh, Feynman? You may not have heard of him. It rings the bell, yeah. But you, you will hear of him as you, as you go, 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 go forward in your, in your career. Richard Feynman, he gave a very famous lecture. And it's called, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, which you probably can't see. And he gave it about this time of the year, nine, you know, in December, but in 1959. And you know, he stood there and he gave this lecture and he said he wanted to describe a new field of science. Yeah, so I'm going to read a little bit of what he says. He says it's a field in which very little has been done, yeah? but in which an enormous amount could be done in principle. Yeah? It's a field that's not quite the same as any other. And what he wanted to talk about was how to look at very small things how to manipulate and control things on a small scale. And so people listening to that first bit thought, oh, that's okay, we can do things on a small scale. But then Richard Feynman actually defined what he meant by the small scale. And so he, he kind of said, well, look, imagine, imagine I want to write something which is a code of five times five times five, yeah? How could I read it today? So imagine I wrote that with atoms, five atoms, five atoms, and out five atoms. Could I read it? In 1959, they only had the electron microscope, and that would not be good enough to read it. So he said, how can we, how can we create a science that will be able to see individual atoms? So you're diving right into the atomic world, and you want to see individual atoms. So that was a, that was a, a, a challenge he set us. 
And the second thing he said, like that challenge was not enough, he said, not only do I want you to see the individual, individual atoms, but could we, could we actually take control of them and arrange them exactly as we want them, all the way down? Yeah? So that what he was basically saying is that, imagine I have these atoms, okay? These are atoms in a molecule, but can I go and look at them? Can I, can I visualize this at the atomic scale? And then can I take these atoms and move them about as I want? Can I have that kind of control? This would be the dream of chemistry. It's also the dream of physics. And if we realized this dream, we might be able to create a new kind of natural world, a biological world, which is, comes close to something that nature has created over millions of years of evolution. So you think, well, what is this to do with surface science? Well, this was a massive challenge in the field. For a long time, we didn't know how to do this. And then it became clear that we had, to, we, had to, we had to get over many obstacles to try and answer this question, okay? So let me describe the problem, okay? I want to look at atoms, okay? So I want to put them somewhere where I can see them, okay? So maybe I want a surface. And then I want to put the atoms on there and I want to look at them, okay? And you think, well, that's so easy, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't seem that difficult. But let me give you the first problem, which is a really trivial problem. It's the equivalent of me giving you, oh, I don't know, a sticky toffee pudding. And I said, I want you to look at the surface of that. And he said, no problem. But I make it a little bit more difficult for you. I said, I want you to look at the surface of a sticky toffee pudding in the middle of a sandstorm in Sahara. Yeah. So you're sitting there in the desert, there's a huge sandstorm coming over, and you're sitting there with your, 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 your sticky toffee pudding. What's going to happen? What do you think? It's going to get covered in sand. Yeah. You won't be able to get to the surface, yeah? So what, what would the answer be? What would you do? To shield it from the sand, so the sand, sand can't get it. Exactly. And that's exactly the problem that we faced in surface science, is that if I put a surface here, in, in the atmosphere, the, atom, the, the molecules in the, in the atmosphere are like the, the sand in a sandstorm. They're raining down on the surface and they're sticking onto that surface because the surface is very sticky. And so at no point, in no time at all, it's covered and we can't see it. So we have to shield it. Yeah. How would you shield it? Well, in a sandstorm, you could maybe create a tent, a tent and, and do that. How do we do that here? Where we create... Fun vacuum, yeah, and we have to create a fantastic vacuum to do this. So I'll, I'll show you. Later on we'll go and see a, a chamber that has, we're actually going to see exactly this, this, this machine here. This is a machine that has very good vacuum in there. We pumped it down, so there's, what we have here is 10 millionth millionth of an atmosphere. So what we're breathing now is one atmosphere. We're reducing it down by a millionth, another millionth, and then ten more, yeah? So there's hardly any air in there. Now, now we're in a position to make, make, make a clean surface, to look at it. You know, that took a long time for, for the field to, to get to the point where we could do this. So now, we create a clean surface. How do we look at the atoms? How do we look at the molecules on there? And we had to create, in the field, all sorts of techniques to try and try and look at look at these molecules, and these are enormous enormous uh, achievements in the field. And today, today we can do we can do exactly what 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 Feynman asked us to do, which was to to look at single atoms on a surface. This is a very famous example. This is uh, 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 done with a scanning tunneling microscope. The, uh, which was invented by Rohr and Binning. They got a Nobel Prize in 1986, yeah? Before you were born, but this is very recent for, for me, right? And you can see here, can you see, can you see, what can you read here? What letters can you see? I, mm -hmm. I, mm. Well, this was written by, by Dan Eigler, who worked at IBM, and he took xenon atoms, and he used, he used a very special microscope to take hold of the xenon atoms, pick them up, and put them 
in very particular positions so he could write this. This is probably some of the smallest graffiti you're ever going to see, right? So this is a tiny, tiny amount of writing done with atoms, and, and this is what Feynman wanted to, uh, 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 challenged the field to do. This, this happened in 1990, right? 31 years after Feynman had set the challenge, the surface scientist managed to do this. Finally, you heard about nanoscience, you know, when things get smaller and smaller, the science of very small things. Well, something interesting happens when you create, when, when things get smaller and smaller. So, if you think of a, a beach ball, huge, football, a, a, a table tennis ball, as it gets smaller, right, what changes? If you look at the inside of a ball, you have atoms inside it, and then you have the surface. So there's a surface to volume ratio, yeah? So as you get smaller, the surface becomes bigger and bigger in comparison to what's inside, yeah? The smaller things are, the, sur the more important the surface becomes. When things get very small, you could imagine that it's largely a surface. So the science of very small things is going to be the science of surfaces. 